One thing Urban Meyer is lear- learning, Shereen, you know, when, when you are the head coach of a major college program, you don't face the same type of media scrutiny that you do when you're the coach of an NFL team. The local market isn't as friendly. The national media is more quick to get involved and show up and start asking some tough questions. And you know, we saw it yesterday with the interrogation of Urban Meyer regarding the hiring of Chris Doyle, the former strength coach at Iowa, who left under circumstances of allegations of racially charged comments and mistreatment of players. And there was a $1.1 million settlement, an investigation that seemed to implicate Chris Doyle, who denied any role in any sort of wrongdoing. Well, the Fritz Pollard Alliance, which praised the Jaguars for their search that led to the hiring of Urban Meyer and Trent Baalke, even though neither are minorities, the Fritz Pollard Alliance came out today with this statement at a time when the NFL has failed to solve its problem with racial hiring practices. It's simply unacceptable to welcome Chris Doyle into the ranks of NFL coaches. Doyle's departure from the University of Iowa reflected a tenure riddled with poor judgment and mistreatment of black players. His conduct should be disqualifying for the NFL as it was for the University of Iowa. Urban Meyer's statement, I've known Chris for close to 20 years, reflects the good old boy network that is precisely the reason there is such a disparity in employment opportunities for black. And and making that even more significant, the fact that Rod Graves just a few weeks ago said he thought the Jaguars did all the right things in the hiring of Urban Meyer and Trent Baalke. And now all the wrong things in the opinion of Rod Graves in the hiring of Chris Doyle, Shereen. Yeah, first of all, Mike, Jacksonville absolutely knew what it was getting into when it hired Urban Meyer and gave him the keys to the organization, frankly. And this is a guy who had Zach Smith on his on his staff forever. And we know how that turned out for for Ohio State. And so now he's hired a friend who he did not work with at, at uh, Utah, as we first thought, as, it, as he made it sound in his statement yesterday. But he's hired his good friend to be the strength and conditioning coach. And, and what's going to be interesting to me is, does this turn free agents away from Jacksonville? They say, I don't want to come there because of this hiring. Is he eventually going to have to fire him? Now, the draft, you don't have as much... Uh, say and where you go obviously but I am interested Mike if free agents turn their uh, cheek to the Jacksonville and say we're not coming there with this hire of Chris Doyle would it be something if one of the players that they draft in any round says I'll just sit the year out and re-enter the draft next year I'm not going to go there and deal with that guy what if there's somebody from Iowa that they draft who dealt with Chris Doyle, who was offended by or mistreated by Chris Doyle and says, no, I'm just not going to do it. Now, again, he denies it, but he got paid a significant amount to go away. Rod Graves has some strong allegations in his statement and Urban Meyer, as I said, learning that there will be far greater scrutiny at the NFL level than there was in Gainesville. I mean, you're the emperor of Gainesville when you're the head coach at the University of Florida and your team is winning. No one is going to question you. No one is going to scrutinize you. No one is going to investigate whether or to what extent you're harboring players on your team who have antisocial tendencies that they may be acting upon. And Aaron Hernandez, say no more than him and whatever it was that he may have been doing down there that no one was looking into at Ohio State, the the various things that occurred. The assistant coach there, the thing that led to a brief suspension of Urban Meyer in his final year with the team, and it's only going to be worse. And, Shereen, the next item I'm going to post at PFT as soon as we're done tonight, because someone told me about this earlier today. It wasn't addressed in the Rod Graves statement, but Urban Meyer said, he said that he was with Chris Doyle 20 years ago at the University of Utah where Meyer was the head coach and Doyle was the top strength coach. And that's just wrong. It's factually incorrect. Their paths did not overlap at the University of Utah. I don't know what defect there is that causes someone. Now, maybe he honestly and genuinely misremembers, but my God, that it seemed like, I remember people that I worked with 20 years ago. I know who I did work with. I know who I didn't work with. And you you develop relationships. You know, it's an intense setting. You're around each other all the time. If they never actually worked together at the University of Utah, you would think that's something he would remember. 
Well, and I think what Urban Meyer is finding out and going to quickly find out, as you said, first of all, the media, because kudos to the Jacksonville media for asking the questions that they that they asked yesterday. They were hard questions, and they were on him, and it wasn't just one question. It was multiple questions. So kudos to the Jacksonville media for sticking in there and asking those hard questions. The second of all, they're going to find out that players aren't going to put up with some of the stuff that, that Chris Doyle did at Iowa and got away with. That's not gonna. That's not gonna fly in the NFL, and it's gonna be over in a hurry. And like I said, free agents probably won't go there. But p- current players on Jacksonville aren't gonna put up with that either, Mike. It's just not going to happen. This is a different league than college football. It's it's way different, and things are going to be different uh, for Urban Meyer in the NFL. And if he hasn't figured that out already, he probably will. And I'm sure that Chris Doyle was very good at his job. I mean, he stayed for 20 years for a guy, for a head coach who's been mentioned for head coaching jobs in the NFL for a really long time. I'm sure he was good at his job. There are a lot of strength and conditioning coaches out there, Mike, who are really good at what they do. And there would have been better hires for Jacksonville that wouldn't have brought this scrutiny with him to the team. And here's the difference when you're in Gainesville and it's reporters from the Gainesville Sun and they start asking you questions you don't like. You dress them down during the press conference. You grab them afterward and you say you're going to revoke their credentials. You start calling the editor. I'm not saying any of this is right. I'm just saying this is what happens when you're the king of a college football program. You don't get questioned the way that you get questioned when you're the head of an NFL program because there are things you can do when people ask you questions you don't like I'm not saying it's right I'm just saying it's different and I'm not saying he ever did it in Gainesville maybe he never had to do it maybe that's part of the privilege the reporters know if I start asking the head of the football program at the University of Florida tough questions I'm going to be covering middle school baseball before you know it so uh that 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 fear is not shared by the press corps in Jacksonville or by the folks who cover the NFL nationally. And, hey, that hey, we may never get Urban Meyer on the program. Hey, we got to call it like we see it. And if somebody's saying something that isn't true, you know we're going to point that out. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.